Hello and welcome. This is lesson four. How is a concealed threat posed? For a concealed threat to be posed, it depends on the conditions that have been put into place previously. The person called the target and the criminals to be used in the concealed threat have been related and that relationship is tethered to the strong relationship with the chief offender. Relationship creates some mental connections or entanglement which enables ESP and telepathy. It is hard to say what a mental connection is but I will try to explain what I understand it is in the next lesson. Now, if the people that the targeted person saw, the criminals, came into the targeted person's vicinity sometime later, the targeted person would become aware of them, but it would be very, very vague and not something that they would react to. But if the chief offender has been signalled of their arrival or if the chief offender is present and of course there's a strong relationship between the chief offender and the targeted person, then if the chief offender upholds that previous experience in the mind, the awareness of the targeted person is enhanced is greater. So they will have the awareness and have it stronger than they would otherwise. But of course they still don't have information. This time the criminals are armed and the criminals are not only armed, they also have agreed to shoot the target if they are given a go-ahead instruction. But this is still not enough to make for a concealed threat. To have a concealed threat, the chief offender, having the means ready and waiting, must uphold criminal intent. And they do that by dialing up the number of the criminals on their mobile and they have their finger over the call button. They don't call. If they make the call, five rings and then stop, that's a go-ahead instruction. But having dialed up the number and holding the finger above the call button is already a threat, the potential for danger. And two things I should have mentioned here. Firstly, the chief offender knows when the criminals have arrived on the scene as they signal their arrival with three rings and then stop. And secondly, the criminals have to be given potential access. That means either the copy of a key to a, a premise wherever the targeted person is to be found or information about their movements so that if they're going into a shopping area at a particular time, the criminals are given that information so as to be able to be there at the same place at the same time. That is potential access. Now let me say that potential access can also be created where the person is in their home even without a key given to the criminals. A person in the house either living with the targeted person or visiting the targeted person who would open the door to the criminals can also be used to create potential access. But it doesn't even have to be somebody inside the house. The actual victim themselves can be used to create potential access. And that is done by the use of somebody that the victim trusts and would open a door to them even in the middle of the night. When that potential of danger is put into place, then the targeted person will react and they react with fear. But of course, without having information about what they're aware of, 
they cannot appraise their bodily reactivity correctly as the feeling of fear, a fight or flight response. So that the targeted person can be terrorised even in their own home, even when there's no one else present. And if they complain, they will be cut down as delusional with professional help. Now, there is one more condition that is needed before the concealed threat can be made, and that is a cheat that hides the chief offender. I will discuss that in the next video because it, it is a good example of what a mental connection may entail.